simply stunning. Just go with the flow, but I'm just having fun. How to make a journal out of an old book. Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm going to create and fill a page in an altered book. It's something fresh and fun to do, but super satisfying and easy. I'm going to help you choose a book to set you up for success, and then I'm going to adapt that book and fill a page or two, sharing lots of tips and examples. And if this sounds useful and fun for you, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I have lots more paper and journaling videos to come. When I'm choosing a book to alter, there are some criteria that help me decide which one might work best. And overall what I have in mind is the purpose. The purpose of this altered book that we're going to create, this journal that we're going to create that will be personal and beautiful and something that we're going to fill. And that might be something I want to be more filled with art pictures. It might be something I want to write in. And I definitely want to create an altered book today that means I can use one of my gorgeous fountain pens. I love writing in journals. The first thing I'm thinking about is the size. And it's the size, width and height, but also the depth. I don't want to start one that's just too big, too big a project that will put me off. This is the first time I've gone about creating an altered book and I want life to be pleasing and easy and something I want to have a go at when I actually sit down at my desk. So something like this, as well as being at the moment just a bit too beautiful for me to cut up, is also a bit too deep. I cannot at the moment take apart something like this. The papers are simply stunning. The paper would be great for painting on, I think it's thick enough. And the size is quite good, although it's a little bit wide relative to the height. But overall, I can't bring myself to take this one apart just at the moment. So that is going to go on the side. I'm also thinking about the thickness of the paper when I'm looking at these as candidates for an altered book. This one has thin papers. And if I were going to use it to add extra scrapbook papers or maybe paint, I feel that that would be a little bit thin. Even if I were to stick a few pages together, which I will be doing in a minute to create the altered book. So I'm going to set that one aside and maybe leave that for something else. I might make envelopes or pockets out of that. This is a gorgeous old book and I just wanted to share this with you. I don't know if you can see it. To Bert from, I think it says Auntie Nell, Christmas 1918. It's falling to bits, so the state of it really doesn't lend itself to being an altered book today. But there's such a story behind this one, I will have to put it to good purpose. I want to use it in the very best way. The paper itself is quite matte, and for an altered book I quite like that. So I am also looking for that as opposed to glossy paper in a book today. The size is okay, it's a little bit small, but it's too deep and too thick. So again, I think I'll pass on that and we'll see what else we have on our desk. This gorgeous book, painted by Beatrice Parsons, described by E.T. Cook, has a lovely cover and I really like that as a candidate for an altered book. The thickness isn't too bad. We're going to take some pages out so it would be reduced. I also like that this one has relatively thick pages. And also these little plates, glossy pet plates, with beautiful pictures. And wouldn't they be sumptuous in an altered book as you fill it with your own artwork, your own writing, your own scraps of paper and designs. You come upon a page like this just to inspire your creativity. So this one I do like, but it falls down because one of the features I'm looking for is to have a book that is glued. So I want one that's glued along here. And many of these older books are actually having all of their pages, their signatures attached with string. So I am on the lookout for one that's glued. This I think has a leather cover. It's called The Bab Ballads Etc. W.S. Gilbert. Beautiful gold foil on the side and that would be great 
as a cover for an altered book but at the moment the vibe I have when I open this is it's telling me no it's full of these very gentle pages so really too light too thin but what gorgeous little diagrams here I can't cover those up with scrapbook paper I just can't do it at the moment DG Rossetti's poetical works Elvis and Elvi Ooh, lovely dark front gorgeous poetry and I'm instantly thinking although the pages are beautiful they are sewn in and I can't just cover up a text like that something that looks like a work of fiction Amberwell by D I think that's an E Stevenson Oh, a little memento Patricia M Pearl September 1956 so nice and old and the pages are quite aged so the colour of the paper to me also matters the size is okay it's a little bit on the small side and it looks like it's glued so I am going to take pages out and it would help this one stay together as I rip one or two pages every other two or three I think that one is a candidate top of the list at the moment so I think overall when I've looked at these oh a music book and again I'm not going to cover up the music that's just too precious I have another of the encyclopedias so we decided that that was just too beautiful and it's amazing how you can have so many books and whittle it down to just one or two this is the one that I think I'm going to use it's one last one here to look at this was the one I had a practice in I played around with a weekly spread and I had a little go with some journaling on the right hand side and I realised how much I enjoy the loose creative flow that we can play at when we fill an altered book. I'm going to alter the book and have a go at doing a page today. So this is the book that I'm going to use and although that's got some historical context and I quite like it, I'm going to take that off. I want this to be something that is more defined by how I relate to it. I want it to be something that I put my own artwork on and we'll have a think about what that might be. And the first thing I want to do is take some pages out and there are specifically pages at the front here that I'm definitely going to keep. I love the font and the variety, the black and white, the different format. So what I will do is start working through this and I'm going to take out two pages every two and then three pages so once we've left a few at the front my plan is to take out a couple so let's just have a go and see how that works that lovely sound of paper tearing yep two one two three let's take out another two and it's not that any of these will be wasted because these will be fantastic material for either turning up and making a Patricia Viramontes style pocket or I could make some pockets like Tina Shabby Dabby Doo -da, or I can make tags from this by sticking it on card and then maybe stamping with acrylic paint so many things that we can do with our book pages take out a couple I'd be interested to know where you get your books from I buy quite a lot at my local charity shop too but to get vintage books like the ones I showed you earlier I really need to go online ooh, ooh, ooh. warning gentle delicate bit delicate operation there we go be brave take out two in fact I think I've taken out three How does it look? Yeah, there's definitely a difference, of course there is. And it's relatively evenly spread. Books were so expensive and so precious years ago. And I really want to do justice to every page. 
My friend Barbara, 49 Dragonflies, is also creating an altered book and although we're both having a go, I am absolutely confident that hers will look different and will be fascinating to watch. So do check out her video when that comes out and I'll be watching it too. The end. There we go. Significantly smaller and all of these lovely papers gorgeous colour, nice texture, matte, great size. I will definitely be doing something with those because of the texture. I think I might even stamp and watercolour on them so that will be fun to do. There's our book. The next stage of the process involves gluing some of the pages together and you can glue all of them into little doubles if you want depending on how many thick sheets you want and how thick the paper is to begin with. I'm also going to create some little pockets by joining them with a gap either at the top or at the side when I put on the glue. So I can either put the glue around the side or I can put it so that there's a gap in the side and just put the glue on the top and bottom. So let's have a go at gluing some of the pages together and creating some pockets. I'm putting enough on to be sure that the pages stay together because this paper being relatively absorbent does use quite a lot of the glue it sucks it into the sheet I might I'm looking for where I've torn out because I don't want those two pages to be together to be together if possible ideally I want sheets that actually sit very close so this is an example this can be one that's doubled up and the reason I'm doubling it up is just to give me some robust sheets so that I can do a few little different things as I fill this altered book. I'd love to know if you've created any altered books. Have you been successful and actually filled any? Have you got any on the go? Is it something you've done before or is it also relatively new to you? The glue that I'm using today is a high tack sticky glue I bought this at Hobbycraft which is my local craft store here in the UK and the reason I like it for this particular purpose is that I'm relatively confident that when the pages have dried I won't see a visible line where I put down the glue and it's also quite flexible so none of the cracking that you might get with some of the glues. The more I turn the pages and feel the strength of the paper the more I think it's good to have a few that are actually attached to each other because I think it will be fantastic to open the book and have those robust sheets that we can do maybe some watercolour painting on and definitely some collage or maybe a combination of both. Just go with the flow, enjoy putting glue on the page. I think that's part of the fun, gluing sheets together. I think this is one that Tina should do, shabby dabby doo -dah. Shall we, shall we have a bit of a challenge and suggest that she does it? Does anyone want to drop her a comment and say that we've been talking about her? What do you think? I'm definitely keeping the last page. I like the end being on there. I think I'll just give yeah, I think that's it. I think that's enough. Enough is enough. It's a little bit wiggly in parts, so I'm hoping that the glue will dry flat. And maybe what I need to do is let that happen. Give it a bit of pressure and just let that dry out. Even that is helping. So this is our altered book so far. We chose a book that we thought was good for us, that would really excite us and make us want to fill it. We've taken pages out, we've retained parts that we want, maybe some of the chapter headings, and then we've glued some of the pages together and we've also glued them in a way that gives us a pocket entrance from the side and one from the top. So all we need to do now is have a go at creating a spread. The first thing I want to do is lay down a little bit of colour. Just put something in the background on one of these pages. I'll start fairly early on and I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the front in case I add an index. So I have a palette with some of the colours that I've been using 
on this and this is a candidate for the cover I thought that might go on there I wonder what you think should I use a whole page on the cover how does that work or should we do something different let me know in a comment down below whether I should maybe rip around this and use it all I've done is just coloured it with some gouache colours some of my real brush pens and just had a bit of fun I quite like that on there but maybe it's too big and maybe it fills too much of the front let me know what you think I really like these fresh greens and although we're moving out of the summer here in the UK and I've definitely been spotting the change in the leaves on the floor of the canopy when I go for a dog walk during the week I do three large walks taking our little border terrier badger out for a walk and I've noticed the the colours more like this in the leaves on the floor and I think it's just incredible how fast the season can change if I don't go for two or three days it looks completely different but what I do like to do is look around me and appreciate the changes even the changes in the smell of the air and the wind so it's been quite windy recently and I've watched the wheat moving in the fields and the leaves being a completely different carpet underneath my feet not yet crispy definitely damp we've had a lot of rain so I thought I would just bring a little bit of the brighter greens in today and then as I move through this altered book I'm going to have a go at bringing some of that seasonality into the colours of the pages I'm just picking up a couple of these colours and we'll have something on here it soaks it up so I do need quite a lot of water you could use watercolour pencils, you could use acrylics, I think that would work really well in a, a book like this. You could splatter it and flick it, you could scribble and ignite the pigment in a watercolour pencil, that's always fun. Maybe a bit of that orange, just a little bit. Just get that on there, and I know I'm leaving gaps and I quite like to do that. And it's quick, I'll bring some onto the next page. Let's add a bit more of the orange, just lighten it up, but I'm just having fun. of adding to this book are a few suggested elements. I had a chat with my friend here on YouTube, Helen Colebrook, and she suggested a number of templates that are really easy to do but maybe add to a journal. So Helen suggested gratitude, which I've done before on a number of my spreads, reasons to be proud and focus, maybe things that really keep us moving forwards. And I think I'd like to do something around those on some of these pages, but I really don't want it to be too much effort, too hard, too overthought. So I think we'll just put something on the page today and I'm already feeling like this is going to work. I think that can go down there, a bit of a backdrop. The colours are not too different. I think they work well with that flower and the flower has got colours in it like the paint on the page behind. Collage is just so easy and so much fun. I love putting together collage on the front of little cards. I like doing it in spreads. I did it on pockets and that worked really well. That can go on there. So I might put a 
couple of these over here and they can be where I put some of my notes. Let's have a go to begin with putting some text on here. And I've got, I've got a lovely new pen. It's a Lamy pen I bought from Cult Pens with some beautiful black ink in it. And I'm just going to have a go putting some pretty text on the page. And with my new fountain pen and some really beautiful deep rich black ink, I've chosen a poem today by William Blake. It is one that I've used before in a previous spread, but it doesn't wear out and it does feel just rather appropriate for this spread today. It's called The Wildflower Song and it reads, As I wandered in the forest, the green leaves among, I heard a wild flower singing a song. I slept on the earth in the silent night, I murmured my thought and I felt delight. In the morning I went as rosy as morn, to seek for fresh joy, but I met with scorn. William Blake. I'm surrounding the script with a faux stitch finish, a rather ubiquitous border that I like to use. And that I think will be perfect on the right hand side today. I want some layering, so I've cut out a tag from a Digi by Tracy Fox. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box down below. And the gentle, neutral tones of that tag seem to work really well with the flower and the smaller tag on the left hand side today. Adding a little label at the bottom, again a little Digi from Tracy Fox, and I have my grouping of three items, which is really pleasing to my eye. I think we all love to use washi, so a chequered one it is today, just a little dash here and maybe, ooh, maybe up here, and perhaps just a little bit on the right hand side too. I'm tearing it in half down the middle because I want a narrower strip and that really seems to work. I need a board around the whole spread, so I thought I'd try a different one today. So it's a simple single line with a black gel pen, that's an Arteza gel pen, I use those an awful lot in my journaling. And just to add a little bit of that roughness, a little bit of that sense of natural texture, I'm adding a few zigzags there, very free and easy. And free and easy is really what this altered book is all about, having fun, adding colour, playing with collage, journaling and paint. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to come on this journey with me. I'm going to be filling the pages and it'd be lovely to do that with you. Are you going to do your own altered book? And maybe you'll watch Barbara's video 49 Dragonflies and get some ideas from there too. I'll be decorating the cover and filling more pages next week so definitely come back for that. And if you've enjoyed this video then check out my tutorial making a really easy envelope folder. If you like playing with paper and being creative with your hands I really think you'd enjoy it. I hope to see you soon.